Okay. Part D. According to the model from Part C, at what time were the entries being processed most quickly? Justify your answer. So with this, we have this rate. We want to figure out when this rate is the quickest. So what are we really finding here? Well, we want to figure out the time when it's the quickest, but what's what does it mean for this rate to be the quickest? What is that? Maximum. Right? We want to find the absolute max of this function. Right? So we're trying to find the absolute max of that function. So this goes back to stuff we've done in the past. To find the absolute max, we need to find the critical values and then check the critical values and the endpoints. Since this is a closed interval, we can use the endpoints also. Well, derivative of P of T, we want to figure out when that's equal to zero. Now, this is an easy one. We could look at the derivative of P of T and figure it out by hand. So we'd have 3T squared minus 60T plus 298. But in some cases, we're going to have problems that are not so easy to find the derivative. So I'm going to show you how to do it on a calculator, and hopefully it actually works this time. Um, if you notice up here, I turned off this equation. There's no bold on the equal. So if you go to the equal and hit enter, that'll no longer be highlighted, because I'm not going to graph that function. I want to graph the derivative of that function. And the calculator can do that for us. Again, we can just type this one in. It's not a problem. But um, in more difficult problems, it helps to do this because it's harder to do those derivatives. So if we do math, wait, we can calculate the derivative in terms of x of y sub 1. So we go vars, y vars, function, y sub 1. And we're doing that in terms of x. And what's going to happen if I go to graph, it's going to graph this for me. It's just going to graph the derivative because that's highlighted. But I want to change the window from 8 to 12 because right, that's the window we're looking at for this rate. So make sure you have a window from 8 to 12, and then graph. And this may take a little while with the derivatives, because it has to take the derivative and then plot it. What we see here is 1, 0. This is where the derivative is 0. And we're going to have another critical value here. So on this interval from 8 to 12, we can see that we have two critical values, one here and one here. Well, this is the graph of the derivative of P of T. Right, so the derivative is positive in this interval, then it's negative, and then it's positive. So what kind of a point on P are we going to have at this x value? Maximum, right? Now, it's not necessarily the absolute maximum. It's a local maximum because it changes from a positive derivative to negative. But this could be a point for our absolute max. What is this point going to be on our original function, P of T? That's going to be a local minimum. So we don't have to really worry about that one. What we need to figure out is what's P of 0, I'm sorry, not 0, but 8, right? That's our first value on the interval. P of 12, and P of whatever this x value is, right? To determine our absolute max, we have to take into account those endpoints and this local maximum. So we want to find this local maximum. And I had problems last period with the calculator calculating that 0. And I don't know if it's because this is the derivative. So I'm just going to, for this one, just to make sure it works nicely, I'm just going to type in the actual derivative, 3x squared minus 60x plus 298. And then I'm going to go up here and turn this one off. But we should get the same graph here. 
and let's calculate this zero. So we're going to do second trace. Or not, just try that again. Second trace. And we want to calculate the zero, so option number two. So left bound, and remember this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I know 8 is to the left of the zero, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Just hit 8 instead of scrolling over. Enter. Right bound, 9. Enter. And guess one more time. And this is what happened to me last period. I don't know. I don't know why the calculator is doing this. But yeah, you should get 9.184. Um, but what I wanted to show you is how you can store that answer, but I guess that's not going to happen right now. But we get this value to be t equals 9.184. Is that right? All right, so we want to check this value. So we have to put each one of these values into the original function. Well, here's another benefit of putting that in for y sub 1. Remember, p of t is in there for y sub 1. So if I do vars, y vars, function, y sub 1, I can do parentheses 8, and then the calculator is going to put 8 into that function for me. We get 0. If I hit second enter, it's going to bring up that same expression, but now I'm going to put in the 9.184, and I prefer to put in the whole decimal, but calculator is not agreeing with me. So we get 5.089, and I do second enter one more time, and let's put 12 in there. We get 8. So we had 0, 5.089, and 8. So this tells us that the entries are being processed most quickly at 12 o'clock, right? T equals 12. And to justify our answer, we have to check the endpoints. So that's the big thing with justification for this problem.